hello and welcome to another podcast episode. I think this is episode 23 and I just finished knitting, wait no, I just finished filming like the knitting, my winter 2024 knitting plans video and so now I would love to talk about like stuff that I've been doing recently. So the last time that I filmed a podcast episode was back in, <laughs> when was that? Yes, a little over two weeks ago. And since then Christmas happened as well as the new year happening. So happy new, happy new year. But also that kind of meant that I haven't really been knitting all that much. I've been spending a lot of time with my family, my boyfriend, and just been relaxing. But I still have done some things, so yes, let's talk about them. So starting off actually with my boyfriend's sweater. So where should I even start? Maybe the specs. So this is a sweater that I have been working on for a good couple of months at this point I believe. There was kind of like um, a project to that that I th thought of because I had a lot of drops Nepal iron weight and last year I didn't actually have a lot of projects that used iron weight and so I just kind of like wanted to get rid of this huge stash so I thought knitting a sweater for my boyfriend is the best thing <laughs> to do because he's pretty large and so I uh, would need a lot of yarn uh, for that. Yeah in any case I decided because I didn't really know I didn't really want to buy a new pattern for it and I wanted to try if I could like gimmick myself through the process so I decided that I would use a pattern that I already had my favorite knitwear things wait no what's her name my favorite things knitwear I had one pattern of her called vest one that had kind of like a masculine fit so I thought maybe I could gimmick my way through just using the vest as um a base and then knit the, the the sweater and a couple of things went wrong with that I completely forgot also to mention the color and stuff so yeah like I said this was drops Nepal in the color aubergine a color that's not available anymore um, so this is really all the yarn that I get it's 65% alpaca wool and 35% wool and the yardage is 75 meters per 50 grams so iron weight like I said so yeah gimmicking my way through it and this I think was not the, the best thing to do as I hadn't really drafted like or like done a lot of like modifications in terms of of sweaters before and so I was kind of like diving into unknown territory without actually really thinking all that much about how things would work. Having said that, <laughs> I I mean if you've been watching the podcast episode you know how uh, the sweat has looked um, or is was looking. Um, so yeah, uh, this is how it looks right now. Yeah, one thing I kind of like did not realize when it came to vests was the fact that usually when you knit a vest, your armhole depth is larger than when you knit like a, a sweater because you don't even really need to think about basically the 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 extra fabric that is gonna be here at your arm because you're knitting a vest, right? So it's just a tiny border if there, if you are even going to be knitting a border and that's it. So I didn't really think about that when I was turning this into a sweater. So I kind of just like used the measurements given 
and then I just started knitting the yarn and there was this kind of like tiny voice in my head that was saying you know what this doesn't really feel right there's quite a lot of fabric at the arms and I just kind of like just kept on knitting and trying to see like maybe it will resolve itself which is something I should stop doing because I've thought this so many times and it never <laughs> works out and so this time it also didn't work out and I was about to I was actually already picking up stitches for the next sleeve and I was just thinking oh this is going to be such a drag knitting this there's so much fabric so much to to knit and I'm knitting it and I'm I'm like in between right I've been making my boyfriend wear it so I can kind of like see how it looks and the drape was just like not right and I was just getting so frustrated and I was just thinking how do I resolve this and <laughs> my I first jumped to the thought of like I'll just start a new project I'll just leave it and then start a new project I now actually have a a Japanese knitting pattern book that is specifically for men so it has a ton of of uh, really like nice patterns designed for men and I was like oh I'll just use some other drops yarn that I want to to get rid of for a new pattern maybe to see if I can learn some new things and then go back to adjusting things and I was like no you are so close to the finish you just need to you just need to figure this out so that's what I've been doing or at least that's what I tried doing yesterday I thought real hard and um, I think I might talk about this later as well but I have been really trying to dive deep into the structure of clothes how to knit things and so I was looking through the books that I had uh, especially Vogue knitting like the complete guide something like that I've, I've spoken about that one before on this podcast and so I did some more measurements on my boyfriend because before this I had only done his chest and his arms no I'd only done his chest because I was like I can just like knit and make him try it on so I did some more measurements I checked like his like the measurements here around his arm arms then I also checked the standardized measuring chart that is in that Vogue book and it see and I also checked the measurements of the patterns that were in the Japanese book and this is also something that I really really like about Japanese knitting books like it's like a schematic right like it has its downside and I've spoken a, a lot about like the da downsides to uh, some Japanese patterns but one thing I really really like about it is that they'll give you a schematic of just like an overview so when you get the pattern you see the um, an overview of the garment so you have all these different measurements like the the the, the height of like I don't know your short row shaping or the height the the your armhole depth the body length the um, circumference like all the different measurements you might need to like even draw this out as like I don't know a sewing pattern you'll have in the pattern and so I looked at those measurements as well the lighting uh, yeah so like I said I looked at those as well and I came to the conclusion that what I need to do is I need to achieve an armhole depth of about 25 centimeters that would make a nice oversized look for him and so I <laughs> looked at the sweater here and as you can see look how oh Ooh, whoa this is too much yeah I think this is good like look how deep this armhole is this is 35 centimeters so <laughs> I I have now decided to again cut this sweater open I'm gonna cut it not only on the back but uh, on the front but also on the back I'm going to cut it and I'm gonna 
cut 10 centimeters worth of fabric out here and then I'm going to graft it and then I'm gonna uh yeah yeah so <laughs> that's <laughs> the first thing that's going to happen so as you can see the sleeve is gone at this uh, at this point I yeah I, I essentially I just cut it off and uh, Here it is. <laughs> so um, that also means that I'm going to have to chop off a part of this here. And I think I might just knit the other way around because I knit this from like large to small. So I'm gonna um, knit the other way around and then, no, 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 no. No, that's not my idea. Basically, I'm just gonna, I like the I heavily increased at the start here as you can see it going kind of like I was like very sharp and then slowly so what I'm thinking is I'm going to cut this off and then I'm going to knit straight from the sweater and then I'm gonna graft it together and then the other one I'm gonna do in a similar manner of knitting straight and then decreasing there's so much rain out here and like the clouds were dark and now they're light so my lighting keeps um <laughs> changing but yes as i was saying yeah so i'm gonna be doing a quite a lot of frankensteining with this sweater but i think it's gonna turn out really good in the end and i think i'm not going to regret doing <laughs> what i have done so that's everything with regards to that sweater at the moment. I'm I am very excited to see how it uh, it fits eventually. So hopefully I'll be able to to finish this by the end of this month. I have a lot of like projects in process in progress now, and I've said this before. I'm I'm trying to reduce that but also there's just so much fun to fun things to knit and right now i'm really just i'm i i think at the moment i'm not even like knitting for to create to get garments i'm just knitting for my mental health and just trying to kind of like lift my spirits cuz trust it's been a rough year for me 2023 was real rough and 2024 is kind of starting off in a not great fashion but i'm trying to be really positive about all the things that are going to come this year so yeah i'm, <laughs> I'm hanging in there so yes moving on we have the sailor collar pullover and this is also one of these projects that has been lingering a bit uh, for me. I finished the back a while back. <laughs> yeah, so I finished the back uh, a while ago. And then recently I cast on. It's supposed to be here. Okay, it, uh, it was still at my desk. Yes. So... This is what I've been doing. This is what I have so far. Not that much. I think about like 15, 18, 18 rows. So I was also just thinking, but where's the, <laughs> where's the other part? So yeah, I've been thinking about basically, what have I been thinking about? I've been thinking about what I'm going to do at the bottom of this uh, sweater. I forgot to give you some specifications. Yes, so let's roll back the tape and uh, talk about this, this the sailor collars pullover. So this is a pattern from the company Daruma and it is from their book, Daruma pattern book number eight. Uh, this one, was created by Mariko Oka and uh, the yarn that I'm using for it is onion yarn number four in the color cola which is this really nice 
dark gray. It's 70% organic wool and 30% nettle fibers. And the needles I'm using for it now, four millimeter needles. And I'm actually really trying to get better at bi-directional knitting. So I'm just using the four millimeter needles and I'm seeing definitely because sometimes I'll go down a needle size to um how would I say it to compensate for for the looser gauge of my pearl stitches but yeah I don't yeah I don't think you can really see it that well but there are some inconsistencies now when it comes to bi-directional knitting but I think if I just pay a, enough attention to tensioning that it will work out because now the way I'm knitting by directional is from right to left I'm using English style and then from left to right I'm using continental style and so it's the same hand I'm tensioning with so I'm used to like tensioning with my right hand and so I think I can I can like it's easier for me to tweak the tension of the knits going the the opposite way so Having said that, yeah, so this pattern, I, so I've said this before, but like the way you're actually supposed to knit this is you're supposed to do a provisional cast on, which I've done on this one, as you can see here. I also did it actually on, on the back as well, but I, after I think about 30 rows or so, I took out the, took it out and actually knit down which I kind of regret because I would have wanted it, I wanted it to knit in the round, like the bottom, bottom part of the sweater, because it actually doesn't have any ribbing. And I actually haven't really looked exactly what type of bind off that they might want to uh, have at the bottom, because it does, it's not supposed to like roll. So in any case, if, I can't figure it out or if I don't like the cast off method that they have for like at the bottom I was thinking maybe I could like actually do a hem so that's also something that I found in Vogue knitting uh, the Vogue knitting book so that's also something that I have been considering with this garment yeah is there anything else I have to say about this I thought this also used like crochet but apparently i was wrong i don't know why but i thought it was crochet but it turns out it's just like ribbing at the collar i am very excited to see how the collar uh, construction works because it's like this and then it's just like a kind of like a seaman collar type thing a oh, sailor collar yeah that's the name of of the pattern yeah so i am still making progress on this one but slow but that's okay you know it's okay <laughs> moving on to the nordic braided mittens from yokohata from her recent book yokohata's seamless knits i'm gonna give some specs first the yarn that i've been using is yarn from this Icelandic company called Eastex. It's called Kambarn. Kamb Kambarn. It's 100% merino wool and the yardage is 150 meters per 50 grams. And the yarn colors are 1214 sky light blue and then sky blue, which is 1215. So I've been using these two. And the last time that I spoke about this pair, uh, turned out that it was way too small for my hands. And it turned out that it was because of the fact that just the sizing in the book was really, really tiny. It, it had a circumference of 17 centimeters, which I didn't really think to measure my own hand. Anyway, <laughs> Actually, I am quite happy that I did like do it like a trial mitten because I did some mistakes here and there, especially specifically with the thumb area. I, I messed up a bit at the, the my first try. And so this time I could actually do it properly. So I'm happy about that aspect. In any case, 
I uh, it was recommended that I use three millimeter needles for the cuff and then I use three and a half millimeter for the hand but yeah like I said too small so I went back and I was thinking should I use four millimeter needles or four and a half millimeter needles and since like my hand I think the circumference is like 19 centimeters something like that 19 or yeah I think it's about 19 centimeters I was like I need two centimeters more in terms of of mitten and so I went up four and a half I went up to four and a half millimeter needles and this is how it turned out <laughs> I am so 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 happy with how it looks and like the best part of it it actually fits like it fits really really well so yeah I last time I said I was gonna like re-knit from scratch and then do it uh, and then like yeah just re-knit one mitten and then cut off the other one and then re-knit that one as well but I just ended up cutting off the first mitten and then doing this one and I just think it looks absolutely fabulous I love the color choice I'm really really happy with it I just think it looks really really good so yeah I went up four and two four and a half millimeters and now it, it fits me perfectly it's not as how would I say it it's not as thick or like it's like there's more it's not as tight obviously but it's still tight enough where I feel like on like a chilly day outside here in the Netherlands it would work for me also um yeah so the thing that I messed up last time was that I didn't do the increases correctly at the hand and so uh, you basically have like this light blue line going all the way up and that wasn't the case in the original mitten it was just like broken um, the line was kind of like constantly broken so now it looks the way it's supposed to look and I'm really really happy with it is there something else I have to say about this? Oh, yes. So I was recently watching Fruity Knitting. I have been trying to watch less YouTube in order to like do more stuff <laughs> in my in my life. So I, I've been trying to be more purposeful with like what I watch. I don't want to just like, I don't know, watch stuff where I don't feel like I'm actually like it's very useful you know like the same way of like mindless scrolling I don't want to be mindless on YouTube and so I watched a couple of fruity knitting episodes because it had been a while since I um, watched the the podcast and they did an interview with Charlotte Stone from Stone Knits and she because she re recently had a book come out well, recently a couple of months ago called what was it called like colorful um colorful socks or something like that it's what's it called ah yes it's called charming colorwork socks and it's a book with um uh, a, a couple of well yeah like I don't, I don't know i think about 14 or 15 something like that colorwork socks and I bought that a couple of months ago and I've been wanting to knit a sock from her and so I saw the episode podcast episode and I was like oh I really want to watch it and see like kind of like who Charlotte Stone is and it was really really interesting so I'll leave a link in the description box below I'd highly recommend watching it but I happened to learn something very useful <laughs> when it comes to color work knitting i don't know exactly the measurements that she said but like you can actually leave floats for way longer i'm someone who was always scared to like have very long floats so i'd catch my floats like every four stitches that's basically 
for this pair of mittens. And so, well, the the first try that I did, it, I I called them very very frequently, and she was talking about how that's really not handy with socks because you need it to be flexible and your foot needs to go through it and so i think she mentioned someone saying like it's okay to have floats over a, a specific amount of centimeters i believe i thought it was two and a half something like that but if you watch the, the podcast episode you'll find out and so it gave me the courage to leave longer floats and that's what i did with this one i can show you the inside I basically almost never like caught any floats. So, and it's perfect, like it's completely fine. And I'm surprised by it and I'm very happy with it. I will say though, I did, I did this on like with magic loop technique or something like that. I did that and and I do sometimes you know when they say when you you're knitting magic loop that you should sometimes shift your um your needles that no your stitches so that you don't get ladders and things like that I did not do that but I was trying to be very aware of the floats that would go like on the sides of the needles I tried to be very much so aware of them and maybe even too much so because what happened was that the floats on the side of the mitten were very very loose and so my hand would like get caught because like you see the floats here they kind of like stick you know to the fabric but the floats on the side were kind of like you could easily catch your fingers in between it so Basically what I did is I just kind of like did like a darning, I don't know, I just kind of like knit through so that they stay put and it worked perfectly for me. I think it's just really a matter of, how would I say this, a matter of experience, like learning how how tight or how loose you should leave your floats at the sides of like a magic loop. Yes, so very, very happy with this. And now I, this is actually the first mitten that I've knit that actually fit me. I made one, I think, I think at this point, like three years ago, and it was like kind of loose and the gauge, like it wasn't a tight gauge whatsoever. And I tried doing like my first um, cable stitch and the placement was awful. It was just like, and I did my first kitchen stitch as well with that. It was a mess. Yeah, I'm now, <laughs> so I mean, I've had, I think I failed maybe five or six times. And now I actually have one and I feel like I can use this as like a jumping board to make more mittens because now I kind of like know how I need to make them to fit my hand and it will only get better in the future. So yeah, this one is done. I started working on the second hand yesterday. So I've only done uh, the cuff at this point. So yeah, not much to say. Actually, this is this was actually delightful to knit. I do have to say so. This was really enjoyable and it was also very, very fast as well. I think I knit the body again in like a day and a half of not like full knitting but just kind of like leisurely knitting. Yeah for my winter 2024 knit I wanted to make two other pairs of mittens and I have spoken about these before. The um, Hana 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 mittens from Ishikawa, Noriko Ishikawa, that's it, yeah, from Noriko Ishikawa, and I had, this is also like one of, this is the third, third attempt of this pair of mittens, I first, if you remember from the 
think like episode 21, I believe, I tried making these mittens with Eastex yarn. It was like a one ply, 250 meters per 50 grams. And it was thinner than the recommended yarn and it was only one tightly spun ply. And so the color work was not looking good you could kind of like see through a bit and the yarn was kind of like very rustic very scratchy so it was just not working and i think i did mention that i was gonna try and buy some other yarn or i had recently bought some other yarn for this purpose of trying again and yeah the yarn that i have been using is lana grossa's cool wool baby the yardage is 225 meters per 50 grams, so a bit thicker than the recommended yarn. That one was 232 meters per 50 grams. Um, but yeah, that actually just works in my favor. And it's 100% merino wool, and I used the colors mint turquoise, uh, number 284 and dark green. I thought this had a really lovely combination and I think it also works very well with like cream stuff, with dark blue clothes. Needle size 2.5 millimeters for the cuff and then three millimeters for the body. So this is how it's looking. Pretty good. So far so good. In terms of like feel, like how it feels, it's really stretchy, definitely because of like the the floats that I've left. The, you know, like it's, I'm pretty confident that it's gonna like, it's gonna work, work out. Like it's not gonna be like insanely tight. So I'm happy with that. Well, I don't want to jinx it either, but I feel way more confident than with the other times that I like try to knit this. And what else is there to say? I did make again modifications. The cuff originally is lace, but I decided I didn't want to do that. I made it a bit longer and I did a two by two rib instead of the one by one rib that I did last time when I tried knitting this. And I just love it. I just really love the color. I'm very, very excited to see how it all work out. Just really excited overall. Yeah. I think maybe the thing that I'm kind of like I there are still concerns in terms of fit but maybe I think I might just try and block this piece once I get to the the hand well I am just at like oh wow it's getting real dark here <laughs> okay I, this kind of looks like a Halloween <laughs> spooky edition of the podcast but I'm still trying to work out like what the best way I can do lighting when it's dark because it's pretty dark these past couple of weeks because of just winter. <laughs> so I think that's it for the mittens. Then lastly, I wanted to mention, well, I think I've given it a name, just basically the description of what it is. It's a button down short sleeve polo it's not really a name now is it but this is the thing that I've been trying to knit myself without a pattern I believe self-drafting it's called yeah so this is the um, polo and I can't really remember where I was at when I last showed this uh, piece but we are reaching end game very quickly. So I'll just put it on. I had so many struggles with this one, but I do have to say I've learned so much from this uh, project. I'm very happy that I took this on and, and tried, tried something for myself. <laughs> so, this is how it's looking right now. I, 
Yeah, so there's a lot to say. First off, what yarn did I use for this? I used some of my drops flora that I've had for a number of years now. And I used, which in the color ice blue. And then I also used some drops kid silk. Yes. And this one is in light sky blue. So, oh wait, the drop floor is 65% wool, 35% alpaca, and the yardage is 210 meters per 50 grams. And then the drops kid silk is light sky blue, 75% mohair and 25% silk. And it is 210 meters per 25 grams. That's the yardage. Yeah, so I held these together and then I knit them in what used i used 4.5 millimeters for the knits and four millimeters for the pearls and then for the cuffs also here at the bottom i used three millimeter needles so this is how it's looking right now and i like i, I was saying i don't know if i said this before but i tend to like look very quickly at what's wrong <laughs> but I think this is a good journey to go on, like trying to create my own stuff, learning to be kinder to myself, but also be, look at the good stuff and the things that I have learned and yeah, just look at like the progress that I'm making. Yes. So I did like the buttonholes. I reinforced the buttonholes by sewing into them because the way I did the buttonholes was I did, I just kind of like, would instead of doing like a yarn over, I basically just dropped the stitch and then casted on a, a stitch on top with like the backwards loop cast on. And then I reinforced the hole so that these would fit because I tried this top, this one actually with a cast on and a, a a cast off and then um, cast on and it was too tight but yeah these other buttons um, they go on off and on very um, easily so what to say about what I've been doing with these I remember for sure I did not have any sleeves when I showed this last time I might not even have done like the bottom here. So um, yeah, one of the big, let's just kind of like go through the construction and then I can just kind of like talk a bit more about it. So um, yeah, I started off with a provisional cast on at the back. I knitted up straight and then I did shoulder shaping doing Japanese short rows. Then, and here's my first mistake, I added, I think two or three rows of extra knitting on top and then went on to do the, the neck shaping and the shoulder shaping again for the, um, what's it called? For the front, yeah. And what happened was because I I cast off for the neck, right? And then I started knitting the... I started doing those just straight three or four, three rows, three or four rows of knitting. But obviously that's going to go in to, towards the front of the garment. And what happened was that the front started to be a bit longer than the back. So how I tried to fix that was when I had knitted all the way down here um, and I was like doing the back, I added some, I added one Japanese short row at the back, but in hindsight, I should have added about three more <laughs> because um, it's still like maybe like a centimeter, one and a half centimeters too long at the front or longer than um, the back but that's just something that I need to remember I think I just kind of like got confused I got confused 
I don't know what exactly why I thought I had to knit the front a different length than the back. I don't know why, but I I did that and so now I know not to do that um, again. So yes, what else? The collar. I had issues with the um, uh, collars as well. I The first time I did it, I basically did a technique where I picked up stitches at the neckline, then increased, then decreased, then folded the, the collar and then crocheted half of it down. And then I, did I do that? Yeah, I crocheted it with live stitches and I was having issues with getting like the, getting the, the neckline clean. So <laughs> halfway through I cast off and then I think I just whip stitched it. I think I whip stitched it or I crocheted it again. Um, in any case, I did half of the collar in a different way, but that's not really like an issue because you won't see the collar anyway, unless it's not like you're not wearing it. But the issue came from it just being knit far too short. My, yeah, I didn't know that you needed to knit so much collar for it to actually like look like a a nice collar, especially at the back, because at the back, a lot of the, at the back, like a lot of the, the fabric of the collar just kind of like goes against your neck and then it folds. So that's something I learned. What I ended up doing was I opened up uh, the collar, so I cut it and then I added um, I picked up the stitches and then I knit in the round instead of flat. And then I I did some short rows in the back because I thought that I needed them, did not need them. Um, and then I did Kitchener's stitch and then I closed it and it looked really not that nice. You could definitely also see the difference from when it went to flat knitting and, and sewing and seaming here to in the round and it was just not a very nice finish so what I did was I just cut everything off and I re it in the round did a Kitchener stitch and then now I have this which is honestly way nicer still not the best because like the collar is a bit crooked I should have placed I knew that the collar was crooked but I forgot and so I didn't end up picking up more stitches here on the side so that it would be a bit more even but um, yeah that's just something to remind myself about next time and what else was there yeah I think for the rest things kind of like went smoothly and then I got to the sleeves and the sleeves were kind of tough to make. So I had initially envisioned it to this, not to be like drop shoulder. It's like, I don't know, could you call it drop shoulder? It kind of is like the shoulder is here. But it is drop shoulder, I'm guessing. I, I wanted it to be actually like, like just on my collar, but collarbone just on my shoulders here and then I do like a set in sleeve and that was not the case I I fluffed up also here I didn't like so here's what I should have done I should have started off with far less stitches on the back I should have taken off about this many this much fabric and so that this section would like just neatly fall like where my arm meets my body essentially. And then I should have like increased here, cast a couple of stitches on and then like worked, basically worked the armhole is what I should have done. But instead of that, I just kind of like knit into a, just knit a square basically, no like shaping here and also no armhole shaping. So. I don't know if you can see it here. And so I I had some issues 
with um, basically the the sleeves putting in the sleeves yeah basically how I picked up this the sleeve stitches for this I so basically you have your vertical stitches and then your horizontal stitches and so I looked at the I checked my gauge and well at least my initial gauge from my swatch and it said 20 for 10 centimeters it was 21 stitches and then 31 rows and so that's roughly you know uh, two to three and so that basically meant that every three stitches I would have to pick up two yeah so pick up two skip one pick up two skip one so that's what I did here and then I you know I was thinking because like I don't know <laughs> I um I ended up doing like a set in sleeve I guess like construction I'm, I'm not too clear on all of the the terminology I'm learning uh, I'll get to this later but I'll, I'm learning both in Japanese and English and so like learning both terms for like a lot of things um, is a lot <laughs> a lot so I'm not very familiar with all of the terms but I guess like a set in sleeve like the sleeve that has basically some shoulder shaping so if you would lay it out flat it'll look like straight here and then it goes like this and then it kind of like goes in or straight I did straight at the bottom so I did the sh shoulder sh shaping I picked up a number of uh, I yeah I picked up the, the desired number like I did the pick up I picked up stitches with my calculated pick up and then I started off here and I started doing the shoulder shaping using Japanese short rows which was a good learning experience figuring because I still struggle a bit with Japanese short rows but I am getting way better at like understanding how exactly uh, they work and so I yeah so what what exactly was it that I did Hmm. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So I basically I had the entire and uh, the full stitch count basically, and so I wanted to start off here at the top with about ten stitches, and then I would do short row shapings, constantly expanding, at different rates. So I believe I first went five, four, four, two, no, five, five stitches, four stitches four stitches, three stitches, three stitches, three stitches, four stitches, and then five stitches. So you kind of like get that curve, basically. So I was just doing whatever and just <laughs> seeing how it worked. And um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like in terms of like picking up the, the pickups, the, the stitches I picked up, it looks pretty neat. But it just still kind of seems like there's a lot of fabric, like, I don't know, like, it's almost a puff, but also not. And I just, honestly, I didn't really even know at this point what type of style I wanted to do. So I left this on the sleeve on. I have blocked it, by the way. Um, I had also issues with my tensioning with the Japanese short rows. So I had to do, like, use a crochet hook to, like, fix <laughs> everything at the back <laughs> and um that that worked out like it looks it looks quite all right i think now definitely the the ones at the at the back oh i didn't really need to do any fixing with those but yeah so i then used this arm as like a practice arm and so i tried a different pickup rate I tried a drastically different pickup braid. This was pick up every other stitch and it looked kind of jank. Um, it's yeah, the, the fabric started to pucker slightly. Um, and yeah, it just didn't look kind of weird. And also the way the fabric bunched up here was not cute. So what I did again, I changed the pickup braid again for something in not necessarily in the middle of those two but leaning slightly more towards this 
pickup rate. So basically what I did was I did the same pickup rate at the, as this one, but every fourth time that I would pick up two stitches and leave one and skip one, I would pick up one stitch and, and uh, yeah, I'd pick up one stitch and then leave one. So I did that again and it also didn't look quite right. And this was interesting because I had not done the shoulder shaping for that, for both of those two sleeves, both the very like low pickup rate and the one that was a bit higher. And both of them like the, the when I put my hands here, it just like the shape looked just so jank, like it looked so bunched up and like there was so much fabric here. And so my conclusion was that this really, even to look like even slightly decent, I would need to do short row shaping for the arms to look a bit nicer, um, despite it being like a dropped shoulder type construction. I don't know, maybe I'm rambling here at this point, but um, yeah, I do have pictures of these um, stuff so I'll put them here, or maybe I've already like put them in the video before, but um, yeah. So I I think may like maybe the the ideal thing. Actually, I think this might have been the ideal thing. I th think I might have I should have maybe like decreased at the bottom a bit for there to be like less fabric here like every row just decreased to here at the bottom but i think it also just looks fine like this um i kind of just want to finish this project and be done with it and just kind of like make my peace with the things that i've learned and use those for other projects and learn a bit more because i did spend a good amount of time working on those sleeves in any case, I think it's a fun project. Will I wear this? I think I or I I really want to. Um, if the sh like if the this starts bothering me at some point, I think that's like the the thing that might have bothered me the most because there's like it's just not symmetric. Then you know, worst case scenario, I cut this out again and I do it again, but that's gonna be a long time <laughs> before that, but I definitely want to use this. So, I mean, I'm gonna use it. Like, I mean, even looking at the first garment that I made, like my, the, the vest number one, that I made like three years ago, that one, the way I picked up the shoulders looks real jank, like really, really bad, but I still wear it. And it actually does make me happy because I'm like really proud of like, that, I, that, that was the first thing that I made aside from a scarf and a hat. And I'm also very happy to see how much I've learned in the time between then and now. That's everything for this like polo cardigan short sleeve thingy. Yes. And that means that we are moving on to da 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 sock saga. So. I have actually finished a pair of socks. These are my Opal KFS um, Smiles, specifically the colorway Grandpa's Smile um, socks. It was a fun knit. This is just kind of, again, my regular sock that I knit. It's two by two rib, which is not like I usually do one by one rib, but I'm starting to actually like two by two rib. I think this is my favorite like construction in terms of like sock length, ribbing. Yeah, just everything about this. I just love, I love the colors. I would love a, a polo in like in this, in this colorway. And I think I might make that someday this year hopefully but i i've already i've already been thinking about that but um yes Ta -da! <laughs> so to give you some specs on these this is a 
one of like the yarns that I bought when I was in Japan from Opal KFS. It's like 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 Jap Japan exclusive. Um, you can only buy this yarn in uh, Japan, and um, yeah, seventy five percent wool, twenty five percent nylon, four hundred and twenty five meters per 100 grams. So basically the same as all your other opal style um, yarns. Yeah, and I knit these on two and a half millimeter needles. Yeah, like I said, cuff down, two by two rib, um, slip stitch heel, and then just uh, just decrease the, the toes. Yeah. What else is there to say about these? I was struggling a bit with the colorways because I, with the, yeah, I was struggling with the yarn because it's self-striping yarn. And so I believe this is the first sock that I made. And the issue with this is that when I started making this one, I ran out of the, because I had cut it into balls smaller ones, like 50 gram balls. And yeah, I think I ran out about here. And so there's also, so this happened also when I was in Japan, I was like rolling up the, the ball and I, I messed up, I tangled it. So I just cut off a piece of thread as well. And so that kind of like screwed up the length of the pattern. Now, it's not very obvious here now, but basically what I'm trying to say is that they, at the toes, they slightly differ. Like, as you can see, this one has no gray and this one, like, this is all gray and this one has some blue up top. And the blue here, this blue line here is longer than this one. The gray line is also longer. Um, but honestly, I don't care. I think these are super, super cute. And I think these are definitely my favorite uh, opal socks that I've knit to date. And I still have some more yarn, so I might make a second pair. I don't know, but I'm very happy with it. So yeah, not really much <laughs> to say about these, just kind of like my comfort sock knitting. Then there was Christmas and I had decided to knit me mom's some socks. So yeah, for one, I, okay, so the reason I still have them is because I didn't manage to finish before Christmas. So I was like, at the very least, I want to finish one sock for each mom. So I packed these up and then I gave them, I was like, first try on, try them on, see if they fit. And if they fit, I'll make the second one. So yeah, I have this one here this is um like my first kind of like full-on ribbed socks long because both really like long socks so this is some onion yarn that i still have left over i have i think i think now i still have about 100 grams of this on um of this color called olive i believe this is onion yarn number four again 70 70 percent uh, organic wool and then 30 percent nettle fiber yeah so yeah this is the color olive i think i already said that so i just did a regular long till cast on the classic stretchy but still very neat up top and yeah, just, I just did two by two rib and then just a slip stitch heel and yeah. And then I stopped the, the two by two rib at the toes and then I just did some decreases. She liked it. Um, I, why is this loose? Oh, I think I first started doing one by one and I thought mm, maybe two by two is nicer. So there's that. And then for my other mom, I think I've already shown this one. I think I already showed this one. Yeah, this one again long. I uh, wanted to, to like make sure that they were about the same length. 
yeah, so this is from Schafpate Opal Schafpate 13. Übernachtung auf der Heide, and then the four ply uni color light blue. And yeah, this one's linen stitch at the back. But I'm I I'm pretty sure I already said that last episode. So not much happened with this, just this new one happened. And um, yeah, I still need to finish that off before I see them again. And yeah, what else is there to say? I forgot to mention, I also, I think I did say that I've been reading Japanese and English books about knitting, how to create your own knitwear designing and stuff. And so I just wanted to just tell you a bit about two new Japanese books that I, one that I recently bought and another one that I bought when I was in uh, Japan and didn't realize <laughs> that I, <laughs> that I had. <laughs> so yeah, uh, this one I've already shown. There's not, I actually haven't really done much with this one um, at this moment. It's adjustment drawing, dividing of knit and uh, crochet. So I think this is definitely going to be helpful in terms of like grading specifically. Well, I think with in terms of everything with designing like sweaters or like cardigans, but um, yeah, this one I am actually going to hopefully start using soon to create something uh, with. This one is called Jibun Saizu no Seta o Amu Skina Saizu Skina Ito de Amu Hoho. So, knit your own, knitting your the sweater of your own size, and then um, your preferred size and your preferred and uh, um knitting method with your preferred size and your preferred yarn. So the grammar is like, the grammar structure in Japanese is different. So it's like, I can't translate from top to bottom. I have to do kind of like from bottom to top, but um, yeah. So basically this does what it says. It, I have to say, this is, I think, if I'd have to compare these two books, I would definitely say that this one's way better. Also, the author of this one is Tomoko, um, yeah, Tomoko Nishimura. Yeah, so basically what happens is that they just go through this, this definitely. So this one, I guess it's more of a general thing because it also shows you cardigans and crochet. This one is really, really specific on different sweater types. So basically at the start, they show you a number of different um, like sweater types. So you have your crew neck, but you have, you have your raglan here. And then they have, yeah, they have, um, yeah, they have yoke, yoke sweater, knitting with a motif. And then they have a number of, they have even saddle shoulder, drop shoulders. They have three different types of, of drop shoulders. And then, yeah, so then you get to your first chapter and that is kind of like the fundamentals of how to knit a sweater with a pattern of your own size. So basically it's all about gauge, um, making adjustments to fit your your body, your measurements. Um, it also talks about how to do that with uh, color work as well. And so that's the first uh, chapter. And then the second chapter, um, they go more, and this is really fun, they go more into depth with every single sweater construction. So, I mean, the first one, um, like the first chapter really focuses on, I guess, like your basic like 
crew neck and then they look at every specific type of sweater like how do you adjust for raglan how do you adjust for a yoke how do you adjust for saddle uh shoulders and just so much really interesting information and i thought since i am trying to get rid of all my <laughs> drops iron weight yarn i could use this book as uh, something to use to to get rid of that i was thinking i still have quite a lot of dark green yarn that i had first tried to make a vest with years back it didn't work out but i um i was thinking i i do think i have enough yarn to actually make like a full saddle shoulder construction sweater with that so that would be really cool if i can make that but i think i'm just gonna have to like take like just block out maybe like four days where i just focus on that sweater alone and figure things out i think that would be really really helpful then last <laughs> thing uh yeah this book i didn't even i i was just perusing because i bought a couple, I think maybe like eight or so Japanese knitting books, vintage ones, when I was there studying. And um, there was this one that I bought that looked very similar to this one. And it turned out that it was machine knitting. And for some reason, I also kind of like thought that this book was uh, machine knitting as well. But then I picked it up and then <laughs> I saw that it wasn't <laughs> machine knitting. It um it says bo bo bariami, which is like knitting with um needles. So this book is from Kodansha, which is like one of the biggest publishers in uh Japan. And it's Kodansha Culture School, and it is basically um trade school. It's a trade school textbook, it says for knitting now i have two others of these i have one for crochet and i have one for what's it called it says afghan knitting but i think it's um that's like the the japanese way of saying it tunisian crochet yeah and so this book is really old <laughs> it's like from the 60s i believe so it basically, this is like the, how would I say, the index. So it teaches you the fundamentals of a sweater, a pullover for a woman, then a cardigan for a man, then a pull, again, a pullover for a woman, and then a woman's vest, and then a woman's dress. And then they also have like here hats, um, gloves, and um, mittens, and socks. Yeah, so it just kind of like teaches you the fundamentals. So they also have, the start is kind of just like showing what uh, you're gonna learn. Yeah, this stuff. And then it shows kind of like the fundamentals of construction. So that's really interesting. I have been going through uh, the book for, I think, a couple of days uh, now, but it's slow, but um, it's still very interesting. Yes, so that's everything for this podcast's episode. I didn't expect that I had so much <laughs> to talk about. It's just been two weeks and I didn't really feel like I made a lot of progress with things. But here we are an hour later. <laughs> in any case, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you soon in another video. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> Take care.